<clears throat> Welcome, Internet. Uh, this is the September 22nd um, IPython Jupyter developer meeting. Um, let's uh, go ahead. Uh, let's see who's uh, first on the agenda. Um, you are. Let's see. Uh, I am. And uh, I actually did something productive last week for the project. Um, I uh, finally got through with our long delayed. Uh, uh, job postings. They're not up yet, but they're in the system, uh, to, so hopefully they should be up soon. And so very soon we will have our uh, job ads for um, our project manager and our postdocs at UC Berkeley for the grant. So those interested in those job postings should be on the lookout because the job ads should be up soon. And uh, I we also held a fascinating uh, workshop at uh, BITS called uh, Data Structures for Data Science. Um, it was an intensive two-day workshop. Uh, we had two public lectures, one by Travis Oliphant, uh, the creator of NumPy, and one by Jeremy Freeman of um, Code Neuro and MyBinder fame in our space. And he's also a very well-known neuroscientist at Genelia Farm who bracketed uh, a number of interesting topics and um, sort of open source um, scientific computing. Um, and then for two days, we worked on basically data structures um, across language ecosystems. It wasn't Python specific, but there was a lot of cool work. Um, we will be posting slides um, and reports about that. And, and a lot of the work there sort of intersects the interests of our project. Um, so we'll be reporting on, on that work for the next few days. But that kept me pretty busy. Um, we were, um, we were the, I was the host, uh, and we had 60 people working at Bits for two days on that. So that was that. Uh, that kind of blocked the sun for me. Just curious, were you talking about cross-language data frames? Yes, that was kind of the heart of the matter. But in a very broad and ambitious sense, we had we had teams from multiple languages on that. We had the Dato team, uh, people from Dato from Seattle came, um, and we worked on um, actually uh, Julia R uh, bindings, Python bindings uh, uh, for that, but we also had people uh, from uh, Wise.io, we had folks from, uh, from the Pandas, uh, from NumPy, obviously a lot of, I mean, it wasn't, we tried to make it language across languages, but the, we obviously have a heavy Python bias, so we had a lot of Python people. But yes, the sort of the motivation of the workshop was sort of what beyond the n-dimensional dense array, in a sense, for data science. So uh, in the age of the data frame and other data structures, what should we think across languages, across communities, um, to establish common tooling, interoperability, common standards, protocols, common libraries, um, et cetera. And so it was kind of an opportunity to get teams Teams who may be doing a lot of similar things to talk together, to prototype tools. Uh, teams from Scikit-Learn were there. Um, teams from the JavaScript world were there. People like Max Ogden and Carissa McKelvey were there. Um, people from low-level libraries like um, the Dined people and Francesca Ted were there, uh, sort of from C all the way from C++ to JavaScript. So it was very, very interesting and very productive. And all the way to visualization, Brian ended up working with Tom Caswell and Jake Vanderplas and um, Jeremy Freeman and Rob Story um, on um, on declarative visualization. So it 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 it, it's, it's, it ended up spanning everything from low level memory constraints in C plus plus to visualization to declarative visualization. Did you guys so talk about cool. about uh, Did you guys talk about uh, ND uh, X rays and things like this? Oh yes, that was my talk. <laughs> Stefan Stefan Hoyer was there, and uh, what Stefan and I uh, spent a lot of time on was basically trying to identify what part of X-ray could we refactor and move into the core of NumPy itself. So, if you want to hear about that, you and I can spend a little bit of time later, and I can tell you all about that. That was exactly that is my personal pet project, and I can talk to you about at length about that. Okay, I'd love to hear more about it. <laughs> So, that was, so that's that's it for me. Next, next is me, I guess. Um, so I'm trying to keep up with maintaining the notebook. I would ask one more time, please, 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 please help. Please come helping uh, on bug fix uh, to get 4.1 out. I'm starting to 
to reach the limit. I cannot work on something else in the number of bugs we have. And I would really like to stop working on maintaining and do and do some reviews of the phosphor things and work on real-time collaboration and see what's happening in other projects. Um, I'm traveling almost for the next two weeks and I won't be able to maintain and keep up with the community. Uh, so if you have one hour to spare, I would really appreciate if people can uh, can can help. Uh, I saw also that some people, after uh, wrote what they were doing on Phosphor, I we don't have links to where your projects are. It's really difficult to come and see where you're working if you don't give us links or don't ping us on your on your repository. Uh, at least to subscribe to the repository to get emails. Uh, would have liked to to done that, and also Friday and Saturday I was at uh, data um, data structure for data science with with Fernando and all all, all the big, big people um, working on how to get rid of Python two uh, a bit. I'm still working on that, trying to to rename Python two to Legacy Python and to speak about Python two at the past tense so that people understand that it's not a thing anymore. And that's about it for for my week. I think that next person is Jess. Jess, are you here? She's going to miss today's meeting. OK. Ah. Uh, okay, first I'm not here either, so I guess I'm next. Yes. All right, um, so I've been still working with uh, Min and Chris on the refactor of the comm part of services. Um, I think it's done. If anyone wants to go review that, there's a link there. Uh, hopefully cleaned up and easier to consume. Um, also finished a, a demo uh, using React with a Phosphor layout, and that will be live on the, the landing page of Phosphor pretty soon. Uh, <clears throat> It's a work in progress, but um, so the repo, the repo is there and working on my end. We just have to make it a live demo. So we're almost there. That should be done by the end of today. And it, cool. it really wasn't hard. <laughs> very happy. I'm very happy to hear that. I think that'll be that'll be very very useful, and it'll it'll address a, a persistent question I think that people are asking. So it'll be it'll be great to have. Sure. Um, and then uh, yesterday or the day before, the they accepted the Q Grid widget. Um, so now that that's a full-fledged IPython widget, and uh, it's not released on PyPy, but you can, uh, it's in the latest master. So you can interact with a data frame, add, remove rows, have validation on the inputs, and uh, so that's live. And then, uh, so I'm working right now um, in parallel with the COM PR, um, refactoring contents and config and adding those, folding those into the integration tests as well. So they're tested against a live notebook server. And then starting to think about how we take uh, the Phosphor, uh, the Jupyter JS services repo, and, and shove it into the notebook. So what kinds of shims we need to rebroadcast events, things like that, um, so that we can actually plug it in and replace what's what's in the notebook repo right now. And that's it. What? Uh... Is Damien around? Uh, no, he left his notes, but he's out. Uh, okay, so um, I finished off the fossil command PR. That's uh, that's merged in. Um, just to recap from last week, we actually uh, we had the we had the full uh, command staff working in demo, and we uh, with the review with Chris and Steve decided to split it up into three separate repos. So we have the command key maps and the and the menus. Um, so the command one is done. So I work here. Command here is overloaded, but just to answer Matazi's point, the uh, the, the command thing there that, that is simply just execution of a handler. We, we also have the key map, which is your you know keyboard shortcut uh, repo, and then there's also the menu one, and they will, all three tied together in a demo. So we can't really send anything out until all three are, are done. Uh, the phosphor key map one is largely done. I have a couple of fixes on uh, on the tests that need to need to be done before I can uh, I can update the PR, uh, but that's you know 99% complete. Um, and Chris took the menus one, um, and and yeah, I think that's pretty much complete as well. Um, so yeah, I think that, that's the state on all of the uh, all of the command stuff. Okay, I think I'm on next. Um, so I've just been, again, uh, following the fallout of uh, going to Jupiter up on MB Viewer, and uh, 
again we've broken slides because we always break slides and uh that has led to D D damien and i discussing what is next for slides um and we're going to start putting together some proposal for that uh, uh you know those of you who use live reveal i mean that's really the only way to actually do the work uh if you want to build some slides so um what does it look like to pull all of the nb convert uh live reveal um nb extensions all that stuff into one slides thing that would stand by itself and be a separate installable piece um sounds really good and, yeah yeah it's just driving us crazy um so we've got some you know got some stuff in there uh definitely thinking phosphor um and definitely thinking the proposed um uh constraint-based layout system for actually doing you know real drag and drop slide authoring with masters and printing and all that stuff so uh that is forthcoming i'll be doing that as um did any insights there as to whether that's an incubator kind of story or is that an extension kind of story extension proposal kind of story nobody okay hmm. i'll do it as an extension <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I would I say, I would yeah, say, sorry, I don't know it was time, time to activate the microphone again to find the right tab. Um, I would say extension first, if you can do it. And if after you want to make a pull request or to make an incubation proposal, you can, you can, you can do that. Um, I mean, basically, I think that incubation is mostly when we have legal legal need to have a specific repository um you you need yeah, to legal have incubation yeah and or or if it if it or if it's something where there's a um a major new degree of uncertainty i think if, if it's something which is just the evolution of something that exists and it's just oh this is just continuing existing work there's no need to go there's no need to go through that process right um, and this, in a sense, you're just continuing to, to continuing existing work, right? The slides have existed in, 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 in various forms for a very long time. So, so I don't think there's, there's a need for that. Uh, and, and for, and for small, for small things, there's no need for that. The, uh, the reason to isolate things in incubation is one, when there's an entity that basically says before we we even put this thing in, in, in public, we want to know whether there's a home a legal home for it, uh, and so it, it's a nice way to, to allow that to happen. Uh, or second, if 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 we have a huge degree of uncertainty, and and someone wants to say, can I put that in there? And we and we want we want to at least have a way of saying we we don't even know if we're going to commit to that or not. And so at least we want to vet that answer first, right? Um, but in this case, that uncertainty isn't present, right? We, we've known for years that this, this is in use. We kind of know what's going on, and you're just continuing along that path. So I would just say carry on. We, we don't want to turn the incubation thing into, into something that is kind of heavyweight and bureaucratic. Well, well put. Um, so then sort of related to that is, uh, is the one issue that I have up of uh, now that we're using Jupiter, we should probably have some more branding of Jupiter on MB Viewer. Um, yeah, totally, yeah. totally. Yep. So there is a work in progress, work in progress pull request there, but uh, it's still pretty, still pretty vanilla. Um, but what we kind of what we're trying to head towards is we want to have the same branding as the site and make things that are in MB Viewer uh, stand out from the content of MB Viewer um, because we're starting to diverge from. The notebook looks like the branding site. Um, so if anybody has any insight on that, uh, if anybody wants to throw out some logos and stuff like that, I, I think our Eye of Sauron one was really good back in the day, but um, uh, we're looking to get that out pretty soon. Kyle's pretty much pro on where it is right now, so we really just want a little bit more feedback, and we'll probably just go with it. Cameron, Cameron, hey, is on the... Cameron are, you on the, are you on the call? Cameron? Cameron going once? No. I'll, okay. I'll add him to yeah, why don't you ping Ca Cameron on the on, on on the issue? Maybe he can he can put his uh, great skills on this one. Thanks. Uh, he's been mentioned on the issue. I think maybe someone would need to direct him over there. Okay. Brian, if you're on the call, can you have or a 
Sounds like John. John, maybe you can help us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can. I'll, I'll try to get help from you today. Okay, thanks. When the Cal Poly contingent can find Cameron. <laughs> yeah. Help us coordinate. Thank you. Um, so I think I'm next. Uh, yeah. This week I released a patch for IPY widgets, mostly just to include the um, interact none fix that Oberon wrote, which prevents none from being displayed when none is returned from a function that's interacted. Um, I also started working on input area. I have a PR open. Mostly I've written a base model class that um, attempts to properly handle hierarchies and models. Uh, if anybody who's interested in the input area stuff wants to give that a look, that would be great. I've also been working uh, at kind of addressing some old, old issues that have been assigned to me, somehow fell through the cracks. Um, one of them Thank you. is an issue related to IPython docs. And uh, the, doc, uh, the, the doc that is causing problems is on our old legacy docs. And so I was talking to Matthias, we may have to rebuild that to get that fixed. Um, but it's also in the wiki, so. I'm not sure if we actually need to do that. Maybe we could just put a link to the wiki. Um, and lastly, I want to announce I'll be working with O'Reilly part-time from October through December doing one of those uh, video tutorials that they, they want us to do. Great, great. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. so the, the docs things also is, is complex because we have to, to get back on how the docs were built a few years back and mm -hmm. fix fix things and also put a warning on top of all pages that is, these are all docs that are indexed by Google. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of work because it's really difficult to get the doc building exactly the, I mean, not exactly, but to get everything to build to build again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did I did uh, a significant fraction of those GitHub pages builds, so I can I can work on things like adding the these docs are old. Here's where the new docs live. Yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's working. One of the problems is for whatever reason, when I when I get back into a Sphinx, I don't remember which version, uh, I get a big chunk of the doc from Qt that doesn't build. So I have a huge chunk of the doc that just disappear. And I haven't found a day to dig into that. Yeah, I can, I can work on that. And since I've, I've, I've fought with the, I fought with that stuff a, a bunch in the past, so oh. I, I might might be a little bit less hair pulling for, for me to get that going. Yeah, yeah that, that would be great. And if you could ping me in that, then maybe I could interject some things that yeah. mm -hmm. need to get manipulated. That's it for me. Great. Uh, Brian, I see you're updating, and uh, I see you're reporting on your DS4DS work. Can, can folks hear me? Yes, yes. you can. Okay, um, so yeah, I, this last uh, weekend-ish, I was uh, also at Berkeley with uh, Fernando and Matias and uh, other members of the community. And uh, I, I've been thinking about for a while this uh, high-level declarative visualization questions and had a, a, a very rare and fun opportunity to sit and code for two days with Jake Vanderplas, Rob Story, Thomas Caswell, and Jeremy Freeman. Uh, we created a new project uh, we're calling Altair. Altair is a, a star that is nearby Vega, mm -hmm. and uh, we're using the Vega Lite uh, JSON specification. Uh, for now, it's, it's under my personal org, uh, but uh, there's uh, other people who want to contribute uh, that need this to be in a in an open source project that has a clear governance model, legal structure, et cetera. And so uh, we plan on, on submitting this as an incubation project uh, fairly soon. It, development will continue in my personal repo. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Thomas Caswell got an initial uh, draft of a matplotlib renderer uh, working, and then Jeremy Freeman uh, bundled up uh, Vega and Vega Lite for a, a native HTML renderer as well. We also had uh, good discussions with uh, Peter Wang uh, about uh, these ideas. The link to the repos there. 
And then uh, I've continued to spend uh, time on the incubation process. We uh, have now uh, formally accepted five in incubation projects uh, that applied to, to the new incuba incubation process. Uh, a link is there uh, just a, a, for the purpose here. Those five are uh, a declarative widgets project, uh, a spark magic, a content management extensions for the notebook, uh, dynamic dashboards, and then a kernel gateway. And uh, we're, we're very excited about that and, and really appreciate uh, everyone's patience as we created this process and tried to, to figure out the, the best way of handling these uh, types of things. Um, I think that's those are the main things. I'm uh, oh a couple other important things. Uh, I'm headed to New York uh, with John and Kyle uh, for Strata. We we will obviously also see the New York uh, contingent who's already there and uh, Safia, who is Safia here today? I don't. Um, she would like to uh, run a Jupiter Day in Chicago uh, sometime in early 2016. Uh, and I'm also planning on uh, working with James Powell uh, and the other uh, New York-based Jupiter folks to have one or two Jupiter Days uh, in New York in October while I'm there as well. And so we're, we're starting to spin up that uh, Katie White, uh, who's a new student uh, working here at Cal Poly, is going to be uh, coordinating uh, a lot of that uh, with with the various folks. So we're we're excited to get going on that, and uh, we will uh, continue to, to post things on Twitter and the mailing list. Um, and we're also uh, I'm having Katie create a hack pad. Uh, for uh, hosting Jupiter Days, so when other people in the community or any of us want to do this, we have a, a, a not a, 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 an overly rigid, but a, an outline of the different things that need to get done and the best way of doing those things. Uh, we want to enable this to scale beyond us as much as possible. I think I'll stop there. Hey, Brian, quick question. Um, with your graphic stuff, you mentioned something about incubation. What, what what do you see as being part of possibly the Jupiter project and incubation? Uh, Altair. Which is the Python side. Yeah, exactly. So, so Altair is a, a Traitlets-based Python API that basically implements the Vega Lite spec in Python with a little bit of sugar on top for making it pleasant for users to work with. And then uh, Altair, I, I just implemented a, a two dict method of, of the Altair objects that produces a valid Vega Lite JSON spec that, that, that can be consumed and rendered by Matplotlib or Bokeh or, or, uh, or Vega. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Do we want to continue with uh, Cal Poly folks? Uh, Cameron? <clears throat> um, so last week we launched the visualization. I think that probably Avron talked about that. I see that in the hack pad, but I thought that was pretty cool. We might elaborate on that and make it more so we can fit more users into that, more people from GitHub, show the larger community um, expanding on that. Also, I've been working on the blog. The blog is almost finished, having the unified theme with the website. So we're not going to be redirecting to an external site when users are clicking on the blog link. And then, so I guess the next kind of thing is probably the install page, make everything native to the website itself. Maybe that's in the future. And then lastly, I am starting to do some user testing on a few things that are popping up on GitHub that Brian's brought me into um, relating to the kernel restart, restart and clear all, restart and run all. Um, we're starting to work on that. And I'm starting to cut down my hours from doing the full 40 to 10 hours a week um, because I'm bringing on my school load and doing some startup stuff. So it should be fun. 
should be jam packed, but that's what I got for this week. Cool. And then, uh, Jesse, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Or, yeah. Um, hi everyone. My name is Jesse. I'm uh, new just from the last week. Um, I'm welcome. Very nice to meet you, Jesse. Nice to meet you too. I don't actually know all your names, but, uh, I guess that'll happen eventually. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm new this, this past week, as I said, um, I'm doing mostly like uh, admin type stuff at the moment, just physical uh, stuff here for Brian, helping out where I can. Uh, I'm also a student here at Cal Poly, and uh, so I'll be doing mostly that. So I'll be doing just part-time work here. Um, and I'm an industrial engineer is my uh, major, just so you all know. Um, I have a little bit of coding background, but not really much any technical to you guys, but um, I really like the uh, whole startup idea, so I'm definitely eager to be here, and uh, you know, very excited for my future. Really. Mm -hmm. Great, welcome to the project. Great to have you. Most of us did not do coding as uh, before being in open source. Yeah, you'll you'll learn along the way. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't know if Abron, he's not here in this room. I don't. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm here at the meeting. Oh, there yeah, he is. Hi, Abron. I guess I'll go next. Uh, so yeah, I was uh, traveling last week and just got back, uh, so I don't have a ton to report. Uh, like Cameron said, I worked on that visualization. Uh, I was really happy to see that launched when I got back, and Cameron did a really nice job with all the logos and getting it all integrated into the website. Um, I'm also excited once the uh, Microsoft gives the legal go ahead for the Spark Magic prototype to be put in the Jupyter incubator. Um, I'm happy to start contributing to that and start working on that. And apart from that, I've just uh, continued progress on the uh, pure Python on Yarn, and that's going really well. Uh, we've got a full container launch, and we have a very simple little uh, Yarn app prototype that goes all the way through and doesn't need any Java anywhere. Uh, so that's going really well, and I'm uh, continuing to work with Ben at Continuum on that. And that's what I've been working on. Great. Mm. I think that's us for Cal Poly. <laughs> Min? Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, Brent Ryan's not around. Simon's not around. <laughs> Yeah, I've been um, working on releasing things. I've been on and off uh, reviewing uh, Steve's uh, comms PR. I'll uh, get back to hopefully get back to that uh, tonight or tomorrow um, and get the comms PR merged. Um, mostly, I've been working on releasing things, um, several releases of things recently. Um, we pushed security fixes um, into the notebook, which meant a Python 3 release and a Notebook 4.0 bug fix release and a Windows, some Windows fixes for our command dispatching um, that meant a Jupyter Core release. Um, and then we're, there are a few things that I would like to release that I think are just about ready to release that we've talked about on the mailing list a bit. Um, Jupyter Client is pretty much ready, but there's some question about how do we deal with the fact that there are there's some initial work towards the next revision of the message spec, but that we don't want to finalize in a release? So how do we kind of how do we communicate that exactly? Um, which I think we're mostly on on the right track with the the mailing list that we're going to ship everything. Everything's going to claim to be 5.0, but there are some um, preliminary implementations of of the future in in the package. So that's probably a few more releases that will be soon. Um, and then the one that's <laughs> more, more work is the notebook uh, 4.1 that um, I've been working on with Matthias, um, getting <coughs> the last few um, bug fixes and things um, dealt with. So there are a few, few PRs to review there. Um, yeah, and, and a few more bugs to bugs to squash, and some some UI decisions to make that I'm hoping other people will make decisions about. Um, I made the mistake of a PR with new dialogues. That, yeah, so hopefully someone else will decide what I should do with that. 
because I don't want to. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think we're we're pretty close to Notebook four point one as well. That things are in pretty good shape. Yeah, and that's me. Cool. Um, do we have Safia today, or? I don't think so. Oh no, no. She said she's she's on a flight somewhere over the border. Okay, okay. so she left her updates. Great. Uh, Kyle, you're here, right? Yep. I actually had to switch over to phone. Um, I don't remember what I put down now, <laughs> but I know what I'm doing. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to be working on uh, some MMB stuff, uh, primarily for having multiple pools for different images. Right now, we just use one image, uh, and there's no like uh, fluctuating capacity for any individual image. So that is like the underlying notebook server that's running. Uh, and along with that comes the kind of like API that uh, we talked about in Binder. Uh, I was going to put that up as an enhancement proposal and then kind of let that fall to the side for a bit. But uh, now at least I'll put up a work in progress and then we can iterate on it. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Uh, some of this week, hopefully get some time to talk about Kernel Gateway with uh, uh, Peter and Gino and Dan and those folks. Uh, okay. That's about it. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you. Which brings us to uh, Peter is away, but Dan uh, Dan is here, I think. Yeah. Um, so a couple of things. Yeah, Peter's uh, on vacation. He'll be back. Um, I want to uh, build on what Brian had said earlier and thank everybody for uh, uh, going through the first incubation pr set of process uh, proposals. I know um, it is the first time we went through it. I may not share the same opinion as everybody else, but I thought it went pretty smooth for the first time. So uh, I thank everybody in the community. Um, uh, as far as now responding, uh, it's, on, it's now on us to get the code out the door. So Peter's back. I think he's back tomorrow. Uh, Gino, bra uh, Peter and I will be noodling on uh, how quickly we can get that out. No promises. We're shooting for an end of the, end of the week, but no promises, okay? Um, no worries. And um, we'll get all that out to you guys. Um, on a side note, I have to say a lot of the some of the benefits of, um, of what we've been doing, you know, in, in either in the hackpad and in the, some of the discussions on, on the proposals uh, related to uh, the gateway specifically is actually in conversations I'm having with clients. Um, it really resonates, and I just I, I know we don't see that in a lot of the forums and stuff, but guys, this. What we're doing is really resonating with people, and, and people are people are look they're, they're looking at the forums. People are not necessarily part of this core community, looking at the forums and seeing what we're doing. Um, as I like to say, we're ahead of the conversation. We'll get stuff out, and I think there'll be a lot of people receptive of what uh, comes out of this. So uh, kudos to everybody. Great, glad to hear that. Thanks. Thanks. No, and thanks for being and thanks for being patient with the process. The whole thing was new to us, and there was a lot of bootstrapping that had to happen, uh, and uh, and it took a lot of effort from all all parties. So we're we're glad it worked out. Coming from my company, this was not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right, great. Uh, is Gino here today or or not? Yeah, I'm here. I just really very short. I just wanted to echo what Dan said. Great conversations on the forums and the proposals and, you know, SAP, we're trying to get that code out there and get your you guys to see it and, and give us feedback. That's excellent. Okay, cool. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Gino. And sorry to and don't uh, get, what, what, don't what? give more feedback. One 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 thing that uh, that uh, that I, I guess we we want to we want to encourage you guys is to start feeling kind of part of the community. Obviously, we 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 know that you guys have have other things going on, but as that code begins coming in, it'll begin being part of the rest of the code. So keep an eye on other threads on the mailing list. Keep an eye on other pieces of the project that um, that kind of you may be relevant because we we want sort of the project to be kind of an organic whole. Um, and so as we work with you guys on that part of the code feel free to kind of jump on other conversations because the, we, we sort of want the whole project to be one, one coherent whole. So you're, you're welcome sort of in, in any part, in any part of the project, basically. Jason. Um, just, okay. Yeah. Just like Chris mentioned, uh, Chris and I are giving a talk on, well, up in Chris's bullet points. Anyway, Chris and I are giving a talk at Strata on, the IPython notebook, including future stuff and widgets and and various things like that. So I've been working on that. Um, and then 
uh, interacting a little bit with uh, with the community as well. Cool. Thank you, sir. Um, is oh. our do we have a canonical place for tutorials and materials from uh, from various talks that are introducing the notebook, et cetera? So we go ahead. Brian. For the most part, we all have our own versions of that and our own re our own personal repos <laughs> orgs. Well, but we've been trying to. I mean, I had been making an effort to consolidate that in the tutorial repo for a while. For tutorials, yes. Not for talks, less. Oh, right. This is a tutorial. This is yeah, this is a well. Not so much hands-on. It's 45 minutes, uh, but a walk-through sort of tutorial. It, it, it's a little weird because it's not hands-on, but it's more of a tutorial, I think, than a talk. 45 minutes long. Okay. Um, I would like also to to have a repo which basically is show off of what you can do with a notebook. It, it would be really useful to have one example of deep cross-language integration, one example of really nice visualization. I, I would be happy to have that. And having that on Try Jupiter. Yeah. So, I mean, I have some of those you... notebooks, obviously. Um, so, Jason, are you on on Hackpad or? Yes. Uh, so, right next to you, I. So, this is our uh -huh. canonical kind of tutorial repo um, that has various examples. Uh, that we used to teach, that we used to teach uh, often, kind of three-hour tutorials. Um, you're welcome to to put stuff in there, uh, and it we often what we do is we use a different index as a different entry point to index in a different way. I didn't follow you there. <laughs> so what you can do is you can basically make a different directory in it, and then use a, a di guide the audience by telling them to start off a different index entry point, right? Ah, uh, index.html. Oh, index. right. Index.ipy. Your index IB. Okay, right. Yeah. The index. Start them off a different say. index notebook right. to guide them, guide them in a different way and basically assemble the content walkthrough uh, in a different way. I see. So you have chapters and then different tables of contents depending on how you want them to work their way through the tutorial. Yeah, exactly. There's about exactly. five yeah. hours of content in there right now. Okay. Yeah, there's a massive amount of content in there. Good. Thanks. I'll probably pick and choose and and, and, or and you, add or add refine or stuff, add to et it, cetera. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so thanks. we've used we've used that repo in, in, in multiple occasions already in the past. We started it a few years ago and we, we've kept adding to it. Um, the one issue okay. is that we try to we try to sync it with the the examples there, we try to sync with the examples. Um, in the main in the main documentation, and we still need to uh, smooth out the process for those not to fall out of sync uh, right. with the fact that we're trying to make make those examples be actually the things that go into the Sphinx documentation. But that's that's a bigger conversation about our docs. That's not going to happen in the next five minutes. <laughs> Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Sylvan, I think you have the last word because Jeremy left his notes, but uh, but is not in person at the meeting. Uh, yeah, I've just been working on um, on Tretlets lately. I uh, have uh, two or three PRs open. Oh, I think that uh, Min just merged one of them like two minutes ago, uh, <laughs> apparently. Uh, and one is a work in progress. I was working on it this morning uh, about implementing the uh, the filtering of uh, trade notification types by type of notification. So when you have trade change or change of elements within the trade, like a container, things like this. Cool. So the more things like notifications of elements, for example, notification is bad. Could you hear me? I got a little choppy for a second there. Okay, we, we sorry about that. Were, we were, uh, turn off my yeah. camera. Uh, okay. okay, so that was it. So I've been working on Threadlet. Okay. All right, uh, we're getting close to the hour. Um, anyone, any last words? Um, next okay. week, okay. Uh, will be next. Next week will be right in the middle of the Strata PyData tutorial next Tuesday. Uh, okay. 
assume we're going to have the meeting anyway, but there's there'll be a, a number of us gone. Okay, we we can have a, a, a reduced meeting. I'll be around at Berkeley, so we can have a reduced meeting with a few of us. Um, but we'll understand that many of you guys will be at Strata, and uh, and so we'll we'll have a meeting with. I I presume some of the Cal Poly will be available, so we can report with the, the some of the Cal Poly people. Um, and I'll be I'll be available, and Min, I presume you'll be around. And uh, and uh, Matthias and I will be around, and uh, maybe we'll have some of the IBM code already present to have a look at, and and so and not all of the Continuum people are going to be at Strata, so. I I yeah, also see there. Justin connected on the meeting, who hasn't spoke today. Do you see Justin? Hmm? Well, some yes. people can connect and some people can connect and listen if they if they want to. Yeah, I mean. well, I guess I you know introduce myself. I actually um, on the IBM team. I work with Dan and Gino and Pete mostly with Pete. Oh. I've worked with Pete for the last four and a half years, I guess. Um, you know, we worked on Watson together. We actually did the uh, Knowledge Anyhow workbench that the IBM Tech Preview that a lot of the content management incubating Bayer project is going to be based on that code um, is going to be fed from what we've done with that, that workbench project. Um, but yeah, that's, I'm basically going to be contributing there. And then also the, uh, uh, the Jupiter, well, not the Jupiter, the, uh, the kernel gateway that uh, Kyle has been talking to Pete about, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, the content management, mostly the incubator stuff. Um, I actually met, you know, uh, Fernando and Brian last year. I think it was uh, Strata. You guys did a meetup somewhere in New York City. Um, so if you guys are coming up again, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm in the New York area. So. Cool. Great. Yeah. I'm, I, unfortunately, I'm not making it this year, but Brian is. So but Brian will see you there. Good to see you again, Justin. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, I think that's it for this time around. And uh, Matthias, I think you, you're the one who has the record button so you can Stop the recording. Bye, Internet. All right. Bye, everyone.